The only country that really worries me is uh, the country of Germany. I don't know if you guys are history buffs or not, but... Uh... <laughs> How does Norm Macdonald tell a joke? When it comes to telling jokes, there are very few comedians who are at the caliber of Norm Macdonald. It seems like when you watch him tell a story, it very quickly turns into pure chaos. But in that chaos, a tremendous amount of humor and laughter can be found. Hey, let me ask you this. Did you ever toss a prostitute off a bridge? <laughs> What Norm does may seem like a mystery to you, but Mark Twain details exactly what he does in the book How to Tell a Story and Others, and we will get into that in just a second. You could be watching him tell a simple one-liner joke about a moth entering a podiatrist's office. You may even know the punchline for this joke in particular, but the way Norm diverts away from the ending of the joke to give us a therapy session from the moth's perspective makes you completely forget that he's telling you a joke. He begins sharing how the moth is working a dead-end job for a terrible boss in a loveless marriage and how his children are very sick and by this point he's gone so far off the deep end you've completely forgotten about where the joke is supposed to go because of your investment in the moth struggles throughout the story Every nook and cranny, Norm makes you laugh over and over again, and he hasn't even delivered the punchline yet. Then eventually, after you've eaten out of the palm of his hand for enough time, Norm throws away the punchline in a fashion where you feel like an idiot for not expecting it. How on earth did Norm pull this off so effortlessly any time he appeared on late night television? First of all, Norm MacDonald has been doing stand-up comedy for well over a decade, in some of these clips over two decades, so by the nature of repetition, Norm had mastered the art of his comedic delivery and his ability to tell a humorous story long before a lot of his most popular clips you've even seen on late night TV. Along with that, Norm was an avid reader who greatly appreciated the works of writers like Leo Tolstoy and Mark Twain. Mark Twain actually wrote a short novel called How to Tell a Story and Others. This is what I will be using today to help illustrate exactly how Norm Macdonald tells a joke on late night TV. When you open the book, in paragraph two, Mark Twain says, there are several kinds of stories, but only one difficult kind the humorous. I will talk mainly about that one. The humorous story is American. The comic story is English. The witty story is French. The humorous story depends for its effect upon the manner of the telling. The comic story and the witty story upon the matter. Then in paragraph three it reads, the humorous story may be spun out to great length and may wander around as much as it pleases and arrive nowhere in particular, but the comic and witty stories must be brief and end with a point. The humorous story bubbles gently along, the others burst. When you read this, what do you immediately think of? It almost feels like Mark Twain wrote this right after watching a Norm Macdonald joke on Conan's late night show. It emphasizes that the destination in the humorous story is not of any real significance and that the constant setting and breaking of expectations is what makes it incredibly special and entertaining for the listeners. However, the comic story that you typically hear from friends or family members is essentially just one big build-up for an often mediocre or unsatisfying ending. Anyone can tell the comic story, but it takes a lot of practice and patience to tell the humorous story. This type of story resembles anti-humor in the capacity that the ending is sometimes anticlimactic, but I think the biggest distinction is that anti-humor is a joke told with the intention of its unfunniness being humorous, but the humorous story is mainly told while the artist just ensures that the journey is enjoyable with less of an emphasis on the ending of the joke. Mark Twain even says in the next paragraph when he writes, the humorous story is strictly a work of art, high and delicate art, and only an artist can tell it. This is why I preface this analysis by telling you how Norm had been doing stand-up for decades before we ever heard the moth joke or heard him call his wife a battle axe. To tell any of these jokes the way Norm tells them takes many hours and many years of hard work and repetition. Mark Twain is not exaggerating when he says it is a high and delicate art that can only be told by an artist who has mastered the ability of comedic delivery and storytelling. Twain details the difference between the humorous story and comic story even more so in the next paragraph when he writes, the humorous story is told gravely, the teller does his best to conceal the fact that he even dimly suspects that there is anything funny about it. But the teller of the comic story tells you beforehand that it is one of the funniest things he has ever heard, then tells it with eager delight and is the first person to laugh when he gets through, and sometimes if he has had good success, he is so glad and happy that he will repeat the nub of it and glance around from face to face, collecting applause, and then repeat it again. 
it is a pathetic thing to see. This is the difference between a joke that Norm Macdonald tells and a joke that your dad tells at a Thanksgiving dinner. When I first read this paragraph, I immediately thought of the most convoluted joke ever that Norm does on the Conan O'Brien show. By, it went by the name of uh, Jacques de Gautier. While I was scrambling to get out of high school, Jacques Zagatino had already... I think he just changed his last name. <laughs> Well, you know, a man grows. He, he, uh... <laughs> he pretends there's absolutely nothing funny about the line, a man grows, when he delivers it so subtly. This is an incredibly funny subversion, but Norm says it as if he has no idea it's about to crack the entire room up, and that's part of the beauty that Mark Twain articulates for the humorous story. Very often, of course, the rambling and disjointed humorous story finishes with a nub, point, snapper, or whatever you like to call it, then the listener must be alert, for in many cases the teller will divert attention from the nub by dropping it in a carefully casual and indifferent way, with the pretense that he doesn't know it is a nub. Another fascinating thing about Norm's delivery is when he fools you into thinking a story or joke is done, and you quickly realize, after you laugh, that you're still in the setup of the joke, and that you're just trying to pay attention and see where he's going to take you next. Mark Twain also detailed someone named Artemis Ward, who commonly used this trick when he was telling a humorous story, where he would deliver a joke, and when the audience took a second to catch and they started to laugh, he looked up with this innocent surprise on his face, as if he didn't just say something hilarious. Another important part that Mark Twain highlights about the humorous story is the pause. Mark Twain says, the pause is an exceedingly important feature in any kind of story, and a frequently recurring feature too. It is a dainty thing, and delicate, and also uncertain and treacherous, for it must be exactly the right length, no more and no less, or it fails of its purpose and makes trouble. If the pause is too short, the impressive point is passed, and if too long, the audience have had time to divine that a surprise is intended, and then you can't surprise them, of course. Another thing Norm is a master at is exactly that in his comedic timing, and he uses the pause as much as he can to make a funny story even funnier, as mentioned by Mark Twain in How to Tell a Story and Others. Now, I have no evidence that Norm MacDonald read this story by Mark Twain and used it as his blueprint for late-night television appearances, but I do know that Norm MacDonald was an avid reader of Mark Twain's literature and has a deep appreciation for his work. I can confidently state, though, that this short novel by Mark Twain describes in great detail what Norm MacDonald is well known for in his late night appearances, because the format is extremely similar. I'm going to show you each of the elements we covered from the novel in a joke Norm tells on Conan titled, Norm MacDonald Tells the Most Convoluted Joke Ever. Jacques de Gautier. Jacques Zagatino. I think he just changed his last name. <laughs> well, you know, a man grows. He, he, uh... <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, Norm setting up Jacques de Gautier's name twice and then saying it wrong as Jacques de Goutina the third time, just to slide in a silly joke, sets up a sequence of expectations that are then shattered by Norm, leading to a huge laugh from the audience and Conan. Specifically, Mark Twain says, to string incongruities and absurdities together in a wandering and sometimes purposeless way and seem innocently unaware that they are absurdities is the basis of the American art, if my position is correct. And Norm does this right here perfectly. The next part that stands out to me is when Norm MacDonald tells Conan about SeaWorld as if nobody in the world has ever heard of it. A SeaWorld there. You know how they have the SeaWorld? <laughs> you know, with the different fish. <laughs> you know. The I didn't know that, but okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Beluga. The SeaWorld. I've sure. been there many a time. Okay. So Conan plays along with it, and in the meantime, the crowd is eating this part up because Norm plays it off so well that he's sincerely talking about it as if nobody knows what SeaWorld is. So I was checking out the beluga whales and stuff, and I look over, and who do you think I see? I hope it's that guy. No, it was, uh, uh, it was just an attendant, but... Uh... <laughs> And in the next clip here, Norm sets us up to think he's seeing Jacques de Gatineau at SeaWorld, and when Norm asks the question to set up the pause, Conan applies pressure to the pause and makes it even more powerful, then right as the crowd quiets down, Norm delivers that it's not Jacques de Gatineau with perfect timing, and it causes the crowd and Conan to burst into laughter once again. Then after Norm has warmed us up, he delivers the final punchline where Jacques de Gatineau is feeding baby dolphins and says to him, I'm serving a youthful porpoise. So he was feeding these baby uh, dolphins, you know, and I said, I'm ashamed of you, Jacques de Gatineau. He said, I think I'm serving a youthful porpoise. Now I believe that... Uh... <laughs>
If there were no incongruities and absurdities in the story, this would have certainly been the shittiest comic story ever. But because Norm understands that the journey in the story is more important than the destination, he's able to deliver this corny ass punchline and get a big laugh from it. Norm made the entire story funny and interesting to listen to, so as a result, the ending, being anticlimactic, doesn't really hurt the joke at all because it's not the landing point. When you understand the chasm of difference between a generic comic story and a beautifully delivered humorous story, you come to appreciate Norm's ability to pleasantly waste your time even more so than before. This is why Norm is held at such a high regard in his late night appearances. This is why Conan speaks so highly of what Norm did in telling these fake stories and wasting everybody's time so highly. Telling a joke like this takes years and years of hard work, and it cannot be learned overnight unless you are simply gifted beyond measures. All in all, this is how Norm MacDonald tells a joke. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching to the end. A quick reminder that the best way that you can help this channel for 100% free is by subscribing down below so that you can see more content when it comes out in the future. I believe 99% of the people who watched my last video on Norm MacDonald were not subscribed to the channel. So let's go ahead and fix that. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Take care of yourselves. God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.